investment destinations. How about Cambodia? It was Asia's second fastest growing economy in 2007, but it's also Asia's second poorest. The likes of Jim Rogers and Mark Faber are interested in investing. And our next guest runs a $100 million fund investing in Cambodia. Leopard Capital has said that it expects a 25% internal rate of return over the next 10 years. Some pretty big numbers. Thomas Hugger is executive director at Leopard Capital and he joins us today from Singapore. Thomas, great to see you. So you made your first investment Thanks in Cambodia, $4 million initial investment in a Seam Reaper property company, property project. And it's a property development project, yes. Uh, we are going to build uh, 250 apartments, low-risk uh, condominiums, for, and we are targeting the high net, mar uh, net, net market there in uh, Sim Reap. Now, the founder of your fund is projecting a return of more than 60% for this project. That's three times the uh, internal rate for private equity investments. How is that possible? It's possible because uh, we can pre-sell these uh, apartments. So on day, for, on day one, when they're coming, the potential buy or the buyers, they have to deposit it. We don't need any uh, bank loans, and that's why the uh, returns are, is, are very high. Additionally, we were able to buy the land at a very cheap price. And we were going, to, the, as, a first step, we are, as a first step, we're going to build in the infrastructure, and that will uh, propel the land price already before we start uh, building the condominiums. Yeah, and, and Thomas, are the best investments in Cambodia right now in real estate? You know, normally real estate is, uh, or property prices is the first thing. If a market really starts to take off, uh, property prices is one of the first uh, indicator. And that's why we, we are very uh, bullish about property prices in uh, Cambodia in general. And we, we, that's one of our sectors we want to invest in. And Thomas, what other projects are you looking at right now? Because your fund says it will invest in property, as you mentioned, tourism, agriculture, and even financial. So what's the next move? Uh, probably the next move will be another sector. It will be in agriculture. Uh, because uh, agriculture prices, as everybody, I mean, everybody's talking about, uh, go, uh, are going through the roof. We want to invest in agriculture, buying farmland or investing in farmland, and planting rice uh, or uh, rubber. The third one, okay, uh, mm -hmm. invest, yeah. The third investment no, is you? of uh, we are currently looking at is in uh, finance and uh, especially we are looking to take a, a, a nice stake in a bank, uh, a pre-IPO stake that we will be exiting hopefully exiting then through the stock exchange, which should come on uh, go, go on live on 09, 09, 09 next year. Okay, yeah, and let's talk about the, uh, I guess, the building of the stock exchange in Cambodia, which will come online hopefully in 2009. How does that change the investment tactic in, in Cambodia? Does it? Of course it will change because there's no stock market. People have no idea uh, what, what stocks are yet. Uh, they're, they're not used to it, and that will certainly uh, have a big change and also have a big impact because especially foreign investors will look at it. They will realize, oh, there's Cambodia. Because we are so puzzled that the international investors, they are not coming to Cambodia because Cambodia has everything investors are actually looking for. You know, has uh, natural resources, gas, oil, uh, agriculture, mining, has cheap, uh, labor, cheap and l young labor force and has uh, big uh, tourist uh, attractions. Okay, and Thomas, isn't the tactic then to get into these, uh, I guess, uh, pre-listing companies before they actually list on the exchange to make profit off of them? And which names would you look at? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, I mean, the big uh, return you make before the uh, you make when you get into a company before it lists, and then hopefully get out uh, when it's listing. There, you really make the the nice return for our investors. Uh, one of the names we are looking uh, certainly is uh, the leading uh, uh, bank in uh, Cambodia. It's uh, Oclida Bank. They started as uh, microfinance lending and now are diversifying also into commercial lending. And it's very well run. It's owned by uh, some uh, international DFIs and also by the Asian Development Bank. Porsche okay, Thomas, moment. we have uh, 30 seconds left here, but I quickly want to ask you this question because some investors are hesitant to invest in Cambodia since it is still a frontier market and one of the most corrupt according to some global studies. So tell me about the risk and return of investing in Cambodia. I think, honestly speaking, if you uh, today invest in our funds, probably the downside is less uh, than when you invest into, uh, let's say, UBS or Citigroup.
because you know, uh, I mean, the economy is so low, uh, there's not much further down, downside. And it has all the things, uh, Cambodia, in order to grow in the future. Okay, Thomas, good luck with your projects. Thomas Hugger.